Hey folks, in this video we're going to do a real introduction on how to buy land without a realtor and with very little down payment. Mostly we're going to talk about the tools that you'll need and how to go about doing it, step by step, just like I'm doing currently, trying to find my own property to start my homestead on, and I've been a realtor for over 30 years. There's always something going on on Grandpa's farm, a place where you're always welcome. Come on Lily, let's go feed. Okay, so where to start? <clears throat> well, the most logical place to start is to simply find an area that you want to live. A place that offers the resources, the regulatory situation, the weather, the possible markets, based on your own needs. Everyone's unique. Everybody's idea of what constitutes a homestead or where they want to live, it's all unique. <clears throat> right now, I'm a licensed real estate broker in Florida. It makes sense for me to be down in Florida working, but that's a long ways from my grandchildren. So I'm up here in Ohio where I cannot work as a realtor because Ohio's got some draconian laws that would require me to go back to college for two years. Even though I've been a real estate broker for over 30 years, um, I would have to go back to college for a couple of years here to get a broker's license. And furthermore, property values here in Ohio are pretty low. So to, to, to make money as a realtor, not, a, not an ideal location. Um, as an example here in this area, uh, I'm in Lancaster, Ohio. In this area here, our median priced house is about $180,000. <clears> I currently am licensed in the Florida Keys, median priced house, $700,000. Um, as a realtor, I usually make 3%, my, my half of the commission, you know, Selling agent makes so much, listing agent makes so much. 6% <clears throat> commission is kind of a standard going around nationwide. Um, so as a, as a listing agent, my share would be 3%. I prefer making 3% of 700,000 than I do 3% of 180,000. So it, it makes more sense to me to work in Florida. However, as a guy trying to buy some land to homestead, it makes more sense for me to be in Ohio. Why? Well, <clears throat> a, couple, a couple of main key issues. Um, I like the weather here. It's not hot like it was when I lived up in, uh, down in Florida. It's not freezing cold like it was when I lived up in Alaska. It's right in the middle. Um, when you are homesteading and you want to raise certain animals like, you know, hogs or something, very difficult to winter over hogs up in Alaska. It gets too cold in the wintertime for them. Uh, even chickens are difficult. You have to keep heat on them all year long. We had uh, chickens up there. Uh, sometimes we would get power outages and the heat in the chicken coop would go off uh, and we would lose toes and we would lose combs and stuff. So <clears throat> very difficult to have to deal with that. So choosing a location that makes sense for you. Ohio makes sense for me. My grandchildren are here. Okay, what are some of the other key things that you need to look at? Well, once you've figured out where you want to be, there are some really strong considerations that have to be uh, well considered, okay? <clears throat> prices of land, bare land. Don't, don't worry about prices with houses on them right now. Try to establish the value of raw land per acre. You buy 10 acres, how much is 10 acres, 20 acres? How much is 20 acres in a different area? Now, good resource for this is Zillow.com, Realtor.com. You can get on these websites, you can you can research a particular area, um, like as an example, you could say, well, Fairfield County, Ohio. How many houses sold in Fairfield County, Ohio in the last year? It'll give you a list of those, you can see what the prices are. How many pieces of raw land? And you can you can put in your parameters, you know, 10 to 20 acres, how many, how many parcels between 10 and 20 acres sold in Fairfield County, Ohio? for the last couple years. So you can establish that criteria and, uh, and pick that out. So find out the prices in the area that you want to be in. <clears throat> Another major consideration is consider the direction the community is going. You don't want to be close to a metropolitan area, yet you do want to be close to a metropolitan area. Why don't you want to be close? Well. The closer you are to a metropolitan area, you're going to have a much more stringent regulatory environment, zoning, building inspectors, that sort of thing. 
but you're going to be closer to having markets that you can sell to. So there's a, there's a trade-off. You have to be the judge of what that balance is for yourself. Um, but you don't want to be in an area where it was farmland and now all of a sudden yuppies are moving into uh, an area. Because <clears throat> what happens? Everybody wants to go out and live in the farm country. But then they move out in the farm country and they find there's pigs and farmers put manure out in their fields and it makes it smell bad and they're slow moving tractors on the roads. And next thing you know, you got people coming into a community and trying to change your community to be exactly what they moved away from. But it's it's just the nature of it. I, I experienced the, the majority of that in, uh, in Montana. <clears throat> a lot of Californians moved up into Montana for the wide open area and the freedom to do what they wanted to do. <clears throat> and as soon as they got up there, they started trying to to, to put uh, all the regulations in place. It's like, okay, now that I'm here and I've got my land, let's throw a whole bunch of regulations in place to stop the next guy from coming in and getting his land. I've seen that time and again. It's just human nature, it happens. So be careful and be conscious of a community when you're trying to pick a place to homestead that it's an area that's going to stay agricultural for a long time. Um, strong consideration, okay. Regulatory, make sure you're buying a property that doesn't have a huge regulatory issue. So you don't want to buy a community that has a homeowners association where you have a, you know, local non, -G uh, um, what do they call it, non-government, uh, an NGO that's going to dictate to you how you can, how big a house, how small a house, what color the house has to be, how you, you don't want to have to deal with all that when you're buying a homestead. <clears throat> so you don't want to have any kind of, of uh, homestead association involved. You don't want to be inside of an area with zoning. Uh, you want to be outside of municipal areas, outside city limits, in, in an unzoned area. Ideally, it's a good idea to try to find a place that has, uh, from my perspective, I don't want a place that has to have a whole lot of building inspectors. Um, sure, well and septic permits, normal health stuff, absolutely. <clears throat> but I don't want to have to go get a building permit every time I switch out a toilet or replace a light, a light switch. Um, I, I dealt with that environment when I lived in New York on Long Island. We had tenants break a toilet in an apartment and I had to go in front of the board and get a variance to replace the toilet that was already existing. Lots of expense, lots of time wasted, lots of unhappy people. So kind of avoid that stuff. Um, check out flood zones. Make sure the area that you're looking at doesn't flood. You don't want to be in a place that's in a 100 year flood. You don't want to be in a place that's in a 500 year flood. If you have to do any kind of financing, they're going to require flood insurance. It's an added expense you don't need. <clears throat> and you really want to live someplace that's at risk of flooding. You don't want to deal with that. Um, we had a uh, property here in Ohio, and uh, our bottom field, our, our big pasture, if you will, uh, was in the floodplain. Not our house. Our house was up out of the floodplain, but our fields were. Could never do anything constructive. I tried fencing it and keeping uh, uh, horses and, and stuff in there. You had to, every time there was a rain, you had to worry about the creek flooding and the horse is drowning or you know, getting washed out or whatever. It's always a consideration. Um, agricultural regulations. Uh, some communities, some areas, some states have some rather bizarre uh, requirements. As an example, uh, the U.S. Duh, Department of Ag, U.S. Duh, um, will allow you, under federal regulations, to raise 20,000 chickens, a, a very big profit source for a lot of homesteaders, uh, you can raise, you know, your meat birds and sell them. You can raise them and, and process them and put them in bags and sell them for profit. Uh, and, and the USD allows you to do 20,000 birds without inspection. Different states, <clears throat> different states, <clears throat> excuse me, will have different regulations in regards to that. Uh, in Ohio, for example, if I do over a thousand birds, I have to have an inspected facility. They don't inspect the birds. But the facility has to meet their requirements. <clears throat> um, in, in Alaska, I didn't have to deal with that. I could just do as many birds as I wanted to, up to 20,000. I would never want to do 20,000, but I might want to do five. Um, as a general rule, when I was raising birds up in, up in Alaska, <clears throat> and my food prices there were pretty high, it was costing me about $7.50 per chicken to raise a bird. <clears throat> and I was selling them for $15 uh, on a per bird basis with a final bird being, you know, four to six pounds. So uh, most of them four to five. 
<clears throat> so you want to make sure that you uh, check into the agricultural requirements uh, for the state and for the county and the township that you're looking at buying pro uh, property in. If it's a township or a county, some places like up in Alaska, it's a borough. Different name, same, same thing. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to check the prices of the land. We're going to look for the direction the neighborhood's going in. Uh, we're going to look for regulatory uh, uh, problems uh, with, with laws and regulations in regards to what you can and can't do on your property. You want to avoid um, homeowners associations. You want to avoid areas with lots of zoning. Uh, you want to stay outside of that. Taxes. Looking at a property uh, uh, at property with taxes. Uh, property. <coughs> what are the property taxes for the community? <coughs> what exemptions are there for agricultural operations? Um, what are the directions the taxes are going in that particular community? Some places may be contemplating, you know, some huge increases. So make yourself aware of those before they, uh, before you go in. Uh, production laws, you know, again, having to deal with how many chickens you can raise. Uh, what about pigs? What about, you know, cows? Uh, what are you allowed to do and what aren't you allowed to do? Uh, what about selling them after they're uh, raised and, and grown? Hey kids, Grandpa here. I am thrilled to bring out a great healthy product like my own goat milk soap. Designed and manufactured from the safest and finest ingredients I could find, my soaps contain olive oil, palm oil, coconut oil, sweet almond oil, and of course goat's milk. Goat's milk soap will not dry out your skin like many other soaps. This is important in keeping skin naturally moisturized to keep it healthy. Prices and ordering information are in the description down below. Thanks for trying Grandpa's Farm's goat milk soap. Remember, 100% money back guarantee. Um, are there limitations on what you can and can't use your land for? Uh, you have to concern yourself uh, with things like easements, uh, where neighbors have access to your property and could use it for different purposes. Uh, <clears throat> look for a possible eminent domain where the government may, may come in and say, oh, we need to run a railroad through here. <clears throat> I bought 20 acres in Montana that had an old rail bed in there. And for a while there, they were contemplating putting it back in. So that would have been a real problem. But fortunately, they decided to go the other way uh, and they tore it out. But uh, it still was a, was a major concern. So um, anyhow, <clears throat> consider what licenses you're going to need in the area where you may be lily barking. Um, <laughs> consider what licenses you may need in whatever area you're going to be in in order to operate your farm. Um, uh, General business licenses, of course, are normal. <clears throat> Do you have to have anything specialized? Look at the markets where you're going to be selling, like for farm market, what are their requirements? Do you have to have insurances and stuff? You have to know about all that stuff ahead of time before you decide on a location for your homestead. Really big one, weather. What's the, what's the weather situation in that community? What is your, <clears throat> how long is your growing season? When does it start? When does it end? What microclimes can affect your particular property that may not be normal for the entire area? Are you higher? Are you lower? Um, you need to consider those things. Um, historical use of the land, big issue. Um, my property that I bought up in Alaska, my 80 acres, unbeknownst to us, the previous owner uh, had a, had a, not, a com not a commercial, his own stuff, but he had a junkyard out there. We were finding car parts and stuff all over the place. Um, not that he dug holes and buried them, but just, you know, overgrown in the weeds and the trees. And <clears throat> we were constantly finding stuff and having to deal with it. So it was a bit of a problem. But what about spilt oil? What about spilt uh, gasoline? Uh, chemicals, you know, what chemicals were used on the ground? Did they spray the property with Roundup? What pesticides were used? <clears throat> Will that affect your ability to uh, be organic? Uh, so check into the organic requirements and how long you may have to let the ground set aside before you can get uh, organic certifications. So uh, very definitely check the, uh, the historical use of the property <clears throat> and make sure there wasn't any problems with it. Now, these are all just some of the basic ideas that you need to go through while you're trying to buy a piece of land. What I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to start showing you the actual tools that I use. How to get started. How do you find the piece of land to begin with? How do you go through? What resources do you use to check on and verify all these things? 
<clears throat> then we're going to get talked about how to uh, identify particular properties, how to identify or, or uh, um, uh, establish communications with the owner of those properties, <clears throat> how to fill them out, how to make offers on land, how to, how to write that up, um, how to check to make sure that there's a, a, a title to the property and that there's been a chain of title and title insurance for that. We'll go into detail about how to close on a property, how to go through the paperwork, what paperwork you need, <clears throat> how to get that done uh, in a cost efficient manner. Um, we're going to talk about closing and how to get that handled. And then of course, you know, how to, how to move on to the property and get things started. So all that's going to be coming up in future videos. Right now, I'm just giving you the basic outline of some considerations when you start looking for land. The next episode, we're going to talk about actually going out and finding land. How do you go out and find the land? Once you do find the land, how do you research this stuff so you know what you're talking about? <clears throat> and then how to contact a homeowner to see if they're willing to sell and how to get that property uh, put in your name. So we'll have more for you in the future videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. We'll have more for you later, kids. Thanks for watching. Bye. Well, how about them toad suckers? Ain't they sappy? Sucking them toads all sure make them happy. Hug a mug of toad suckers way down south. Sticking them sucky toads in Zay mouth. I be a toad sucker knowing a duck it. You just find an old toad and you rare back and suck it. Folks, you have a good day. Bye.